evangelism from a practical point of view. There are about 60 students, both men and women, and a small group of instructors who are in charge of the course, which lasts for a period of two years. The course is an intensive one. Students get up at 6.25 every morning and devote a good deal of time to private study. Tai Hu is naturally spent in chapel, for a sense of worship is made to underlie every activity in the college, and it is important to know how to conduct a church service. Training does not leave out of account the practical day-to-day -day requirements of life. And there is time to relax too, for a natural human atmosphere is essential for those who are training to work among men and women. At the end of two years, the students take an examination in theology and evangelism. This means that they are thoroughly equipped to deal with those fundamental questions with which an evangelist is inevitably confronted. The need to understand human beings is brought home to students when they begin to experience the wide variety of church army activities. One of these is the care of motherless children. The church army has several homes for children who have lost their mothers and whose fathers are unable to bring them up. Their ages range from a few months to 16 years and the only contribution the father has to make is what he can afford. Every endeavor is made to keep the children in touch with the outside world. They go to the local school, make friends, and go out to their amusements just like other children. The maintenance of family ties is naturally considered very important. Fathers can visit their children once a week to learn how they are getting on and to take them out. The day when daddy comes is rather like a family reunion for many children can scarcely remember their mothers and the kindly sisters who look after them are the only mothers they know. After childhood comes youth and youth demands recreation and amusement. To such demands the church army supplies healthy outlets in their youth centers which are open to the young regardless of class and creed. Here they can find all the amenities they require without feeling any sense of obligation to do more than amuse themselves. Besides the usual club amenities, there are weekly classes for everyone who cares to join. These include cooking lessons. There are PT classes too, both for boys and girls. A regular attendance is proof of the keen spirit with which they are conducted. Everyone's are also a regular feature of youth centre activity. They range over the number of subjects, including that of religion. Everyone who attends them is perfectly free to express their own opinion. And naturally, many problems are discussed which would not otherwise be aired. In this way, healthy guidance can be given and a spiritual influence spread quietly and unobtrusively. Unfortunately, not all young people receive the benefit of good influences. In such cases, the church army seeks to undo the harm which has been done. At their very home on a large farm at Saffron Walden, boys who have been before the magistrates work under kindly discipline. While some are taught gardening, others look after poultry, rabbits and pigeons. Those who are so inclined are taught the rudiments of farming, so that when they leave, they are ready to play a useful part in life.
there are classes for those who are of school age and these are held out of doors in sunny weather. When the morning work is over, the boys set off for a walk. During the afternoon there are games and general recreation in which both masters and pupils join. Thus a mutual confidence is built up between them, which is the best guarantee of a hopeful and happy future. Church army officers are stationed at many of the prisons of this country. They seek to gain the friendship and confidence of the prisoners, to enter into their personal problems and to give them help both spiritual and material. A prisoner is usually worried about his family. He wants to get news from them and send news to them. All this the church army captain is able to do for him. Every endeavor is made to keep the bond of affection and understanding between the man and his family. So that when his time is done and the prison gates are opened to him, the one person he most wants to see in the world is waiting for him. Close by this large prison stands the church army hut. Here it is possible for the prisoner to have his first meeting with those nearest and dearest to him. The first moment of meeting is a most difficult one for both parties, and a discreet and friendly atmosphere plays a great part in ensuring the success of a reunion. During their time of trouble, the prisoner and his wife have formed a new link between them. That link is the message which the church army has to give. It is a bond of strength which will help them to face a new future with hope and confidence. Each summer, overworked mothers, who perhaps have not had a holiday for many years, can come for a fortnight to church army homes and know that all the worry of shopping and getting meals will be taken off their shoulders. The Church Army Fresh Air Department is responsible for these seaside holidays which mean so much to mothers and children alike. While the children play, the mothers know they can really afford to take the day off and do what they like for the change. A good hot meal is waiting for them when they get back. While they sit down and enjoy it in peace, sister goes to see how the children are getting on. When the day is over and the children are put to bed, the mothers have the evening to themselves. When the fortnight is at an end, they go home refreshed and happy to take up their workaday lives again. The church army strives to help people to live successfully in the true sense of the word but it also aims to assist those whose lives are drifting down to failure. 
Girls may go astray through bad influences or through some weakness in themselves. Whatever the reason, the church army seeks to help them before it is too late. Very often it is the local vicar who puts the church army into touch with a case which needs help. Girls are taken into church army homes during the time that they need help and until they are ready to go back to normal life. Not more than six or seven stay in the home at a time. Small numbers help to build up a family feeling and restore the sense of self-respect. Each girl is given practical advice in regard to her difficulties. She is made to feel at home and given all the material help her case requires. It is explained to her that during her stay, she will become one of the family. She will help with the running of the home and she will be looked after and received all the attention she needs. Then, when her baby is born, she will nurse it until she is fit to take her place in the world again. She will find spiritual help. When the time comes to leave, she will know she has a friend to whom she can turn in case of need. One of the problems of modern life which demands attention is care of the disabled. At the Church Army's Rehabilitation Home at Brixton, disabled men and women are trained for jobs for which they are suited. Many of these disabled people go out to situations which have been found them after their period of training, but quite a number live permanently in the home. The work which they do is of a high professional standard and its sale goes to defray the cost of the establishment. Once again, faith and works bring a new purpose into lives which would otherwise seem to have little future. After childhood, youth and middle age comes the wild cinema by the open air service. Neither must we forget the physical needs of the people. Canteens for the forces, homes for those without shelter, and the care of the aged. Nor must we forget our fellows overseas, who need us now more than ever before. Yes, our tasks are urgent. And I do not ask your interest and support because they are easy, but for quite the opposite reason. We must never forget that the making of a new world is beyond human strength and the wisdom of man alone. Only in the example of the carpenter of Nazareth and in the might of the spirit of the Holy Comforter can we find sufficient strength. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it.